This is a new Volkswagen Arteon R shooting brake. And it's very much like a Volkswagen Arteon shooting brake, but with the letter R in the middle. Why don't they just call it the Arteon? Sorry, that was a rubbish intro. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk you through all the upgrades this car has over the standard Arteon, both on the exterior, the interior, and on the chassis. I'm gonna take it for a drive, and yes, I will launch it to see how quick it is from naught to 60 miles an hour. See how much Volkswagen are lying about its claim time. Now, before we get into all that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you won't miss a single upload. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the engine. So what we have here is a two-litre four-cylinder turbo petrol with 320 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque and it drives all four wheels via a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox now let's have a little listen to this engine so go on start it up give it some revs wow <laughs> that seems like some serious rev hang but at least the car does let you rev it all the way to the red line when it's stationary let's have a little listen to it from the back now let's experience the exhaust. That's all right. As well as its sporty engine, the Artyan R gets some sporty brakes. So you've got 357 millimetre discs up front, gripped by two piston calipers, and 310 millimetre discs at the back, gripped by a single piston caliper. Now let's check out just how good they are. Let's stop in the car. I wish the flies would stop bloody biting me. Okay, let's do a brake test from 60 miles an hour. Full emergency stop. See what distance it takes this car to stop. Here we go. Up, oh, and it did it in 33 metres which is pretty blooming good, actually. Now I'm gonna run you through the design upgrades over the standard Artyon shooting brake. So you've obviously got your R badge there. That's the exact same badge you have on the R-line version of the normal Artyon. However, the proper R gets this more aggressive, sportier front bumper, and you get wider air intakes, and these air intakes are real. Those ones, they're actually smooth airflow down the side over the wheels. Here at the sides, the R10R gets 19 inch alloy wheels as standard, rising to these 20s. You also get blue brake calipers. Instead of having this part down here on the sill chrome, it's body colored for the R, though the R does then have satin door mirrors. Lovely. Here at the back, the Artyon R has just the R badge rather than the name Artyon. There's also a smoke tail light. You also get a redesigned rear bumper, which is a bit sportier. It's deep and there's like this diffusory thing going on under there. Don't know if it does any diffusing. What's not fake though is this, look, quad tail pipes, chrome tipped, looking good. Here on the inside, the Artyon R gets a sports steering wheel with an R logo there. You've also got an R button on the steering wheel, which allows you to change driving mode. So you don't have to take your eyes off the road and press the one down here. In fact, I don't know why bother with this one down there, no. Anyhow, you also get some larger gear selector paddles compared to the standard car, so they're easier to hit when you're going fast on track. And there's loads of blue accents, such as the blue here on the steering wheel and the stitching. There's blue on the dials. There's blue on the gear gator, blue on the armrest, then blue stitching on the seats. Speaking of which, they are sporty bucket seats there with the R logo on them. Not so sure about this fake carbon fiber trim on them nor the fake carbon fibre trim on the doors. Also, that trim there is designed to look carbon fibre as well. Mm. Anyhow, let's move on. You get some aluminium pedals. There's R floor mats and R kick plates on the sills. Lovely. I'm going to launch this car in a bit to see exactly how quick it is. But before we do that, I need to tell you about the chassis upgrades Volkswagen has made to this RT and R. So they've fitted it with stiffer suspension, so stiffer springs, and you get adaptive dampers as standard. Also, the ride height has been lowered by 20 millimeters to lower the center of gravity and give you a more sporty drive. You get a four wheel drive system and that four wheel drive system can send 50% of the engine's power to the rear wheels under normal driving conditions. Then on the rear axle, you have an electronically controlled limited slip differential, which can then send 100% of the power that's gone to the rear wheels to either of the rear wheels, depending on which one has the most grip to help push you out of turns. Okay, let's see what the Artyon R is like to drive. So I've got it in race mode, manual mode for the gearbox. Let's give it some. Yeah, <laughs> plenty of performance from this engine. May only have two liters, but it does have plenty of punch. Doesn't sound amazing, it's more just like, ah, <laughs> the accelerator hard. Gear shifts, quick on the upshift, not so great on the downshift, but still pretty decent. 
car doesn't lean much in the bends at all and there's lots of traction from that four wheel drive system and despite being in race mode it still goes over the road pretty well it doesn't feel bumpy or crashy it's it's comfy enough and the steering's sharp and precise it's all fairly predictable and calm and unflappable it's the usual vw stuff really it doesn't have like the pointy nature or the agility of the smaller and lighter golf but it's impressive how it goes down the road is it a load of fun hmm do you know what something like a bmw m340 i touring is more playful it's more involving and it has a better engine and if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car just click on the pop-out banner up there to go check it out however it's not all bad this what i like this car for is that when you put it into drive mode you put it into comfort the adaptive dampers really slacken off and then it's just really cruisy really easy to live with quiet relaxing great on the motorway it is quite a good all-round package this i just think it lacks an element of excitement and i don't really really want one i can respect it for what it does but I have no desire to own one. Hmm. The RTNR shooting brake is designed to be a sporty car that all the family can enjoy. And that's why you get some sporty add-ons here in the back, such as this blue bit of trim here. You get the faint carbon fiber here on the door, on the seats. And the seats themselves are a bit more sporty than in the standard RTN. The RTNR shooting brake has a rather large boot. It's got a capacity of 565 litres. However, that's only two litres more than the hatchback version. Yeah, this is an estate car. In fact, if you need a bigger boot and you want the same engine, gearbox and four-wheel drive system, you may as well just get the Tiguan R. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, follow the link below the video, you can check out my full in-depth video review of that car. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the R2R shooting brake. This car might have these big paddle shifters for added driver involvement, but the truth of the matter is that this car will automatically shift up, even if you put in manual mode, if you go near the red line. Even though the R2R uses the same clever torque vectoring rear differential as the Golf R, VW doesn't allow it to use drift mode, which is a shame because it's got a long wheelbase and be easier to drift. The R2R starts from 52,000 pounds, which means it's about 2,000 pounds more expensive than a BMW M340i, and that car has a three litre straight six engine. This is just two litre four cylinders. Hmm. What's especially annoying is that the car was actually meant to be a V6, but then they decided not to do that because of emission regulations. Anyway, if you want to see how much money you can save on an r r shooting brake or any car for that matter, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWide because look here on average, you can save just over four grand off a r shooting brake. Now, alternatively, at a later date, you can simply Google Help Me CarWire and my team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers, Plug Over. The integrated headrest on these sports seats really do impede the view of rear passengers, so they have to lean round if they want to see at the windscreen. There's only one colour that comes as standard, and that's a boring grey, so you don't want that. You probably want this blue, but that's an £800 option. It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. Considering this is a big, fast car, an average of 30 miles per gallon is fairly decent. As standard, the Artyan R comes with a sunroof and massage function to the front seats. The adaptive dampers have 15 different stiffness settings. Look, one of those. It's going to take me ages to decide exactly which one is perfect for my situation. Being an R model, this Artin has stability control that actually goes all the way off. Check this out. Not only does the tyre pressure monitoring system give you actual pressures, ideal if you want to take this car on track days, but look, you have some performance monitor gauges with different stuff you can look at like G's and pressures and boosts and kilowatts and power and stuff. Volkswagen says this car do 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. Got my special timing gear up here. Let's see what the reality is. Launch engaged. Yep, yeah, just hooks up like crazy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 4.53. So then what's my final verdict on the Volkswagen Artyan R shooting brake? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the Artyan R shooting brake. You know, it's a decent enough car and it's pretty quick. It's just a little bit too expensive for what it actually is. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a cheeky little like. Also, let me know some of the cars you'd like me to review in the comments below. 
If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can get a car out and we will actually help you sell your car. And to do that, we will actually get prices and offers from lots of dealers on your car and check out various other car buying sites as well to make sure you get a good price for the car you're trying to sell.